خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا السلام علیکم and welcome to this week with حضور We are delighted once again to present highlights from two virtual mulaqats that took place with Hadrat Khalif al-Masih, may Allah be his helper, last weekend. We begin with Saturday's event, where beloved Hazur met with Khudam Waqfi Nino from Canada. Last weekend, over 1,000 members of Waqf Nino in Canada were blessed with the opportunity to participate in two virtual mulaqats with Hazrat Khalif al-Masih V, may Allah be his helper. The first mulaqat took place on Saturday, where around 500 Khuddam aged Waqfina no gathered at the International Centre in Mississauga. After a short formal session, the Khuddam were able to seek Hazul's guidance on a range of issues. One Khadim asked about the development of one's relationship with God Almighty. So you have been asking questions in your letters as well, writing to, to me very frequently. Eh? And in each and every of your letters you have a question there. And I have been answering those questions, right? Are you the same person? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I'm happy that uh, you are very much interested in spiritual things and the, the, in your belief and, and, uh, and the religious knowledge. You see, the first thing is, yes, of course, we should try to develop our communication with Allah Ta'ala, but it is not uh, necessary that you always receive some uh, ilham or dreams or such type of things. After, even after having offered your prayers and uh, seeking Allah's help, you are satisfied, your heart is satisfied, that means you are in good communion with the Allah Ta'ala. Right? And try to develop it, it as much as you can. So it is a process. You cannot achieve the thing within a short period of time. When you are a primary school student, you cannot compete a person who has qualified his post-graduation degree, right? So, but you have to struggle and strive hard to achieve that goal. So keep on doing it, and one day, inshallah, you will have better result. But Always remember that there is no other way but to pray to Allah Ta'ala and uh, bow before Him and ask His forgiveness and help in every matter. That is the, the, the main thing, that should be the main thing of a true believer. Right? So, Well, gradually, you will improve yourself and develop communion with Allah Ta'ala. Jazak, inshallah, and jazakum Allah. In today's day and age, modern medicine has overshadowed homeopathy. As a waqfe know, uh, what should we do to tell the world the truth about homeopathy and its positive effects on the human body? You see, homeopathic is type of medicine, type of treatment which, which is being used for the treatment of the patients. Then it is not a matter of Sharia, right? So you should not worry that even um, uh, allopathy has overshadowed um, uh, homeopathy, then they, we, we should be very much concerned. Doesn't matter. You see, the main thing is that how can we better treat our patient? So homeopathic is one of the remedies or the, the knowledge or the medicine which can be used for the treatment. And if you believe in that, well and good. Those people who do not believe in homeopathic, then even if you give them homeopathic, it will not affect them. You see, somebody who had very firm belief 
in Hazrat Masimur alayhi salatu wasalam, and because of that, he, he believed that uh, the children of Hazrat Masimur alayhi salam also have good relation with Allah Ta'ala. So once, he had very severe stomach pain, and no medicine was working. And at this time, Hazrat Mirza Sharif Sahib also knew him, so he went to see him, how is he? So he was just crying, I'm suffering from pain and he's not being cured with any medicine, this and that. So Hazrat Mirza Sharif Sahib put his hand in his uh, pocket and then after three, four minutes, he just brought out his hand from his pocket and asked him to open your mouth and then just th threw some uh, uh, some small tablet in his mouth and then asked him to okay swallow it and some drink it with take it with water okay after f 10 minutes he was okay somebody asked husband Zashim, sir what did you do he said nothing he had some problem i knew that it can be psychologically treated so there was a small piece of paper in my pocket and I, I, I prayed and then made it like a tablet and then put it in mouth and that paper worked. So this is how the miracles happen. So there are some homeopathic medicine which works miraculously. But it is not necessary that in every patient, in every treatment, in every disease, uh, in every disease, you, the homeopathic will work. It is wrong to say that uh, the research is not being done in homeopathy. In France and Germany, there are quite a number of n n doctors, homeopathic doctors, who do research in homeopathic and they have developed some new medicines and that is very good in curing so quite a number of diseases. The, we should not worry, it's not a matter of Sharia. Right? So, if you believe that homeopathy is good, okay, it's good for those who believe in it. And for those who do not believe in homeopathy, do not Im impose your thinking on them that you must use a homeopathy. Right? One Khadim asked how he could increase his faith and trust in Allah the Almighty. So, the first thing is, that how long do you take in offering Fajr prayer? Five minutes? Uh, five to ten minutes around that time. Four rakas in five to ten minutes. How can you understand? How can you understand Surah Fatiha in five to ten minutes? You see, <laughs> while see. offering your sunnah, if you are not offering your Fajr prayer or any of the prayer in congregation in the mosque, and eh? and on your own you should recite Surah Fatiha repeatedly when you are doing your own prayers and say Ehdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, Ehdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, Ehdina Sirat al-Mustaqim so Allah Ta'ala will guide you on the right path eh? so repeatedly do it in your prayers and in your Saidas fervently pray to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala give you the strength to be a good believer and firm in your faith. So it will take time. You see, what are you doing? Are you going to school or college, university? I'm going to school, high school. School grade 12? Yes. Achha. So see, this is your final year in the secondary school. Until and unless you work hard, you know the in-depth knowledge of your subjects which are being taught to you or your whatever is in your syllabus or in your course or in your books you cannot qualify or succeed how can you qualify your level of uh, piety and righteousness without struggling hard and striving hard so you are you're giving six seven hours to your studies after schools before the exams but here, you don't. You give only five minutes or ten minutes at the most, and even whatever you are reading in the Holy Quran, you don't know what are you reading. 
So if you don't know about your subject, how can you write the answer? When you see the question paper and you have read the book without knowing what, was the, what, was, what is the meaning of that, you cannot understand the question, right? Mm -hmm. To understand the question, you should know that what is the answer and where it was written in the book, in my syllabus, and what the teacher taught me about uh, this subject. Then you will try to answer it. Here, you don't know anything about what Allah Ta'ala is saying, and you are asking that, how can I believe in Allah Ta'ala? You don't know what Allah Ta'ala is saying, how can you believe in Him? You have to find out. You read the Holy Quran with translation, then you would know. Then it will strengthen, then it will strengthen your faith and your belief in Allah Ta'ala. Right? <laughs> okay. Right. Salaam alaikum. What is the best way of approaching an Ahmadi friend who is becoming overly involved in various sins and moving away from the Jamaat and into situations that are harmful for him? The thing is, you will have to find out the cause of it first. If he's your close friend, then you should know that what are his preferences now? Who are those people with whom he is sitting, his company? Is he trying to avoid you and sitting with other friends who are not good, who are involved in committing so many sins? Then, if that be the case, you will have to ask him that the way you are going toward is not the right way, right? It will spoil your life and ultimately you are going to ruin yourself or rather you are going to doom yourself, right? Try to be sympathetic to him. Once he realizes that you are his real friend and his sympathizer, then he will try to listen to you, okay? There are some other causes. Sometime when uh, some boys, youngsters have some problem in their houses, their father and mother don't have good relations. That is also causing them to deviate from, because one side, their father and mother say that religion is the thing which is, teaches us to do good things. Whereas, when he sees the action of their, uh, his father and mother, they are not even uh, practicing those things and their character is, you know, disturbing him. Sometime, some office bearers become uh, cause of the trouble, right? So there are so many things, so you have to find out what is the cause and you treat them according to that, right? Jesus. And, but the main thing is that you, they must realize, they must understand that you are his sympathizer and best friend. Then they will listen to you, okay? Jazakallah. Okay. I am son of martyr. What's your advice for families of martyrs who came from Pakistan? Your parents, your, your father or whoever was martyred in Pakistan, they sacrificed their life for the cause of the Jamaat. And you are here in this country because of the Jamaat. And here in this country, instead of involving, indulging yourself into the bad things of this society, try to find out the good things of this society and portray yourself as a role model for these people, right? And uh, excel, if you are a student, excel in your studies. If you are a worker, work hard and always try to keep in mind that Allah Ta'ala is always seeing you, Allah Ta'ala is watching over you, whatever you do, if people are not seeing, Allah Ta'ala is seeing it. So, so, since you have come here, 
because of the jamaat because because your your father or your relative sacrificed their life for the cause of allah so you should try to work hard to listen to the commandments of allah to practice the commandments of allah and show your example as a good believer a mu'min and amati right ji okay allah hafiz assalam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh the following day more than 550 waqfina no in canada had the honor to meet hazrat khalifatul masih v may allah be his helper once again following a short formal session that fall had the chance to ask a range of questions hazur my name is shahriyar ahmed danish and my question is as a new high school student i notice many evils in school that occur please advise us on what we should do to avoid all the evils that are commonly found in high school you see so now you are almost 15 right and this is very dangerous age teenage is normally is and when you reach the age of 15 16 17 now you think that you are now mature and uh, there should not be any restriction on you but keep in mind that you are an ahmadi and you believe in one god and that uh, islam is the true religion we believe that the whole the, the holy quran is the last book of sharia which was revealed to the, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so there are quite a number of commandments allah taala has told us these are the bad things these are the good things right so if we know that what is bad and what is good then obviously if you are a sane person ha eh? if you have wisdom some wisdom then you will try to avoid those things which are bad which can ultimately destroy your life here in this world and the hereafter don't think that uh, if you are committing something wrong doing something wrong nobody is seeing you always remember that Allah Taala is always watching over us, and He knows each and everything, whatever we do. So, for the sake of attaining the love of Allah Taala, for the sake of sticking to the teaching of Islam and commandments of Allah Taala, we have to do the good things which have been commanded to us by Allah Taala. So, in this way, you can. avoid the bad things of this society of your students and also at the same time you know your fellow students if they are doing something wrong then you should try to express your dislike on that thing or rather you should hate that thing if they are doing something bad right and they should know that you don't like it when they come to know that you don't like bad things they will avoid before you so this is also one of the ways you can avoid these things and try to pick your friends choose your friends from among those students who are good in nature good in studies and uh, morally good okay jazakallah huzur What is the best way to have a connection with Hazur so Hazur knows who I am Who you are then you should write to me frequently Hmm and sometime you can write to me something some good joke some good narration ha huh? so then I will remember that he is the boy who wrote to me such and such thing right okay if you if you like you if you like you can paste your picture as well on your letter okay assalam alaikum 
Jazakallah, Hazur. My question is, can there be an MTA channel for kids with kids shows and um, story time about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Promised Messiah Alayhi Wasallam? Nowadays, there's a slot eh, of children program and that is story time. And even now, they have started a new program of my khutbas for children. So they are uh, in that program, they try to explain my khutbah in easy language and in different ways which is understandable for children, right? So, but at present we have some slot for the children, but time will come when we shall have MTA children, a dedicated channel for you later on, but not now. It is possible, but we shall see to it. But do you see the children's slot, children program, which whatever is coming on, you see children story time, kids program, and then khutbah summary for children. That is also a good program. You should see to that program as also. Are you? Okay. My question is, what should we do to become the best wakfino? A good wakfino should be regular in offering his five daily prayers. A wakfino should be regular in reciting the, the Holy Quran, part of portion of the Holy Quran daily. And if possible, try to understand the text of the Holy Quran or try to know the translation of it, whatever you are reciting, right? The Vakfinaw should be well behaved, right? He should be, he should respect the elders. He should be sympathetic to his youngers, right? He should not fight, he should not fight with each other, right? And uh, try to watch uh, good TV programs, not the bad ones, right? And try to try to uh, excel in your studies. Try to work hard in your studies. Strive hard to so that you can get better grades, right? So these are some of the qualities. And other than that, you can listen to my khutbah or read those points which I mentioned there. Okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Okay, Allah Hafiz and Nasir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those were highlights from two virtual mulaqats that took place last weekend. We now end with our final segment the Friday Sermon Summary. In today's Friday Sermon, Hazure Anwar, may Allah be his helper, continued his series of sermons on the companions of the Holy Prophet wasallam. Whilst narrating from the writings of Hazrat Muslim Aud Anho, Hazur mentioned the ardent desire of Hazrat Umar Anho to be buried next to the Holy Prophet wasallam, and how this was fulfilled. ایک اور جگہ مسیح علیہ السلام فرماتے ہیں کہ جو شخص بکمال شوق اللہ کے دامن سے وابستہ ہو جاتا ہے تو وہ اسے ہرگز ضائع نہیں کرتا خواہ دنیا بھر کی ہر چیز اس کی دشمن ہو جائے اور اللہ کا طالب کسی نقصان اور تنگی کا منہ نہیں دیکھتا اور اللہ سادقوں کو بے یار و مددگار نہیں چھوڑتا اللہ اکبر ان دونوں یعنی ابو بکر عمر کے صدق و خلوص کی کیا بلند شان ہے وہ دونوں ایسے مبارک متفن میں دفن ہوئے کہ اگر موسا اور عیسیٰ زندہ ہوتے تو بسد رشک وہاں دفن ہونے کی تمنا کرتے لیکن یہ مقام محض تمنا سے حاصل تو نہیں حاصل ہو سکتا اور نہ صرف خواہش سے تاکیا جا سکتا ہے بلکہ یہ تو بارگاہ رب العزت کی طرف سے ایک عضلی رحمت ہے اور یہ رحمت صرف انہی لوگوں کی طرف رخ کرتی ہے جن کی طرف عنایت الہی عدل سے متوجہ ہو حضرت مسلم آؤ 
رضی عنہ بیان کرتے ہیں کہ جب حضرت عمر فوت ہونے لگے تو انہوں نے اس بات کے لیے بڑی تڑپ ظاہر کی کہ آپ کو رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے قدموں میں دفن ہونے کی جگہ مل جائے چنانچہ انہوں نے حضرت عائشہ سے کہلا بھیجا کہ اگر اجازت دیں تو مجھے آپ کے پہلو میں دفن کیا جائے حضرت عمر وہ انسان تھے جن کے متعلق عیسائی مورخ بھی لکھتے ہیں کہ انہوں نے ایسی حکومت کی جو دنیا میں اور کسی نے نہیں کی وہ رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو گالیاں دیتے ہیں یعنی مورخین عیسائی مورخین مگر حضرت عمر رضی رضی اللہ عنہ کی تعریف کرتے ہیں ایسا شخص ہر وقت کی صحبت میں رہنے والا جو آن صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی صحبت میں رہا مرتے وقت بھی حضرت کرتا ہے کہ رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم قدموں میں اسے جگہ مل جائے اگر رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی کسی فیل سے بھی یہ بات ظاہر ہوتی کہ آپ خدا کی رضا کے لیے کام نہیں کرتے تو کیا حضرت عمر جیسا انسان اس درجے کو پہنچ کر کبھی یہ خواہش کرتا کہ آپ کے قدموں میں جگہ پائے بس یہ آن حضرت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا مقام ہے جس کی وجہ سے حضرت عمر کی بھی خواہش ہوئی کہ آپ کے قدموں میں جگہ پائیں